The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 893. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. You can now purchase The Tao of Self-Confidence, A Guide to Moving Beyond Trauma and Awakening the Leader Within on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Walmart, Indigo, and other major book retailers. Get your copy today. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to The Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today, she is the CFO at OneNav, and I'm super excited to have her on to share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Vivian Pham. Vivian, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yes. Hi, Sheena. Hi, everyone. My name is Vivian Pham, and I am currently hold the position of CFO at OneNav. OneNav is an IP company. We develop the Peer L5 Global Navigation Satellite System Receiver. It is designed for smartphones, wearables, and trackers. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Vivian, it was so great meeting you in person in New York a couple of months back, you know, being able to connect, uh, do a photo shoot, have dinner, and also being part of the US PacWise program. So it was really great that we were able to do that. And Vivian, what is your cultural background? Yes, so I was born in Vietnam, and I immigrated to the United States with my family 35 years ago. Just want to add that outside of my work, I'm also a proud mom of two incredible grown daughters. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Vivian, what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? There's so many great quotes out there. But I have to say my favorite self-confidence quote would be from Ricky Rogers. Strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. And this quote resonates to me because it speaks to me the journey of growth and empowerment that comes from facing and conquering obstacles, ultimately leading to a stronger and more confident self. Thank you so much, Vivian. And I love that quote that you mentioned. And it's so true. You know, when it comes to strength, it really is what we can overcome because every day it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. We're going to go through challenges and setbacks, but how we react to them and take action is really what matters. And it's from those setbacks and challenges where we can really build true strength, uh, courage, and confidence. So thanks for sharing that quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Well, in my view, self-confidence it's actually the unwavering belief in oneself and one's capability. It's all about having the firm conviction of my worth and my strengths. And I think it's the resilience to confront challenges head on, regardless of the differences or ob obstacles that I encounter. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And it is important to have that innate belief in ourself, right? Because without it, we're not going to go out there and even take the first step to forging our path or knowing that we are capable of taking things to the next level. And so I love that you were able to mention that because it's so important and having resilience is also important because, you know, we're going to fail <laughs> and failure is not a bad thing. It's, it's just feedback. It's just telling us what didn't work and then we move on to the next. So I love that definition that you mentioned. And Vivian, what was your life like before you discovered self-confidence? Yes. So I grew up in Vietnam within a family of four daughters and one son. And I directly experienced life under the communist government firsthand. And in a society where traditional norms privilege the role of the son within the family lineage. So that environment imposed severe constraints and limitation on me. So basically, every decision and action seem overshadowed by fear. And I have this fear of reprimand for speaking out, the fear of stumbling in a system where they have limited opportunities, and the fear of not being accepted for it, just simply being myself. So that cultivated a hesitancy and a self-doubt within me. So making it was very difficult for me to embrace my personal aspirations and express myself freely. 
Thanks for sharing that. And I think in most Asian cultures, it's it's like that, right? The son is favored over the daughters. Um, you know, if, especially in Chinese culture back in the day, if they had to choose between a son and a daughter to go to school, the son would go to school, right? While the while the the daughter would be taught to run the household, learn, you know, live that one way of life and then never rock the boat. And so we feel like that's all we're good for and we can't go do anything outside of that. And, you know, it's unfortunate that happened before, but now we're breaking that cycle, showing others, you know, what's possible that we are more than just what we're taught to do. And what was that point in your life when you realized you were more than enough, especially being in tech, being in, you know, an Asian woman in tech, having a high position, you know, that's something that's still rare in, in, in America. What was that aha moment that made you realize you were more than enough to be the person that you are today? So we talk about resilient earlier, and I have to say my pivotal moment of that aha revelation happened to me when I returned to work after the birth of my first daughter. So that's still quite vivid in me. As I recall, I was super excited coming back to work after the hibernation maternity leave. However, you know, all that excitement shifted drastically when the department director informed me that my position as the accounting manager had been filled during my leave. And he said, according to the law, the company were only obligated to offer me a comparable role. And that comparable role was the accounting clerk. Consider both roles, the accounting manager and the accounting clerk were both office-based roles. And to add to that, I was asked to relocate to a cubicle half the size of my previous one. So that experience unveiled to me this harsh reality of discrimination in the workplace. Women encounter unequal treatment and being penalized just based on our gender, irrespective of our capabilities. For a brief period, I felt very inadequate and I question my own worth. And at one point, I even thinking of quitting my job and staying home as, you know, it appeared to be the easiest route for me as a woman. However, there was this internal struggle in me, a deep reflection of the fundamental principle of fairness and equality. And I found myself question my value and my belief in the American dream of equality for all. So that incident really ignited a fire within me to challenge existing norms and advocate for a workplace where everyone should be treated equally. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm glad you were able to realize, you know, the, the unfairness that happens for women, right? It's especially when, you know, they're, they're pregnant, it's seen as a bad thing versus the opposite. And it's, it's important to raise awareness for this and to realize we're more than enough, we can go out there and go after the things that we want. And because of your realizations, what's your life been like now? So, you know, after that moment, I, I really feel with, with this determinations. So uh, the incident exposed the glaring disparity in the workplace for me. So despite facing the hurdles of, you know, being a female, being an immigrant, I realized I need to fearlessly pursue my career goals. And I recognize the necessity of having a voice and being an integral part of the management leadership team in order for me to make a meaningful impact in the corporate world. So after that, it's propelled me to aim higher, strive to bring more to the table. And, you know, as of today, I have been in my uh, CFO roles for uh, several companies, and I've been in the finance path for about 30 years. That's awesome. And I just, want to, I just want to say congrats. And thank you so much for paving the way to show other women, especially Asian women, what's possible especially for that period of time, 30 years, 30 years is a long time. And yet you're still here thriving and showing others what's possible. So I just want to say, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self confidence. What'd be that one tip you'd give to her? Well, I would say encourage females to embrace confidence, right? We talk about surpass the conventional, explore the vast possibility but staying true to ourselves. 
I would say surreal, surround ourselves with a strong support network. It's important to have a community of high women cheering each other on. And I, I think for me, remember that leadership qualities should be based on the individual strengths and traits. It should never be confined by our gender. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles you want to share with? I'm available to connect on LinkedIn. Yep. So drop me a note on LinkedIn. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Vivian, you can also head on over to the topselfconfidence.com and search for Vivian's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Vivian today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you, Sheena, for inviting me to join this Empowering Women's podcast. Not a problem. And it was such an honor having you on the show today. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 